Good morning, you guys. I wanted to take a little bit of time to review those dye hybrid crosses we had worked on prior to going on our little break here. Um, so I'm using this really awesome gizmo called Mouse Genetics 2 Traits from a website called explorelearning.com. Explorelearning.com has all kinds of awesome simulations in both math and science um, and they are offering free access to that for a short time here while we are um, undergoing this COVID-19 um, situation. So reviewing what we know, um, the simulation is kind of awesome. So you can take a pure mouse, a mouse that is homozygous for both characteristics of fur color and eye color we can see over here. Um, in the right hand side, it's capital F, capital F for fur, which represents black, and then its eyes are capital E, capital E, which represents a dark um, or a black eye color. So a homozygous uh, organism, when you breed them together, no matter how many times you breed them, they are going to produce offspring that are exactly phenotypically and genetically similar. So we can do that with the black mice, with black eyes, we can do that with the black mice, or the white mice with black eyes. We can breed them a whole bunch of times, which is what mice do. And no matter what, we get these pure offspring. That's not typically where we were having troubles. Um, where we were seeing a little bit more difficulty is when we were taking um, organisms that were homozygous dominant and breeding them with homozygous recessive and then breeding their offspring. So if I breed these organisms, we're gonna see that they're all gonna come out with the exact same genotypes. Um, and they'll look the exact same phenotypically. So their fur will carry a dominant and recessive allele. So they'll hide that recessive allele for white fur, and then their eyes will hide the recessive allele for the red colored eye. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to put some of these mice into cages. Liam didn't really like this when I was working through the simulation because he didn't think it was right to breed siblings together. But for the purpose of the simulation, we're going to have to do that. So I'm going to clear these out. And then, one second, because I want to start fresh. So I'm going to take these two, what would have been siblings from one of the generations, and I'm going to breed them together. And I'm not going to breed them together just one time to show these probabilities, but I'm going to breed them together a whole bunch of times. So let's get 100. And now we're going to go a little further. Let's get 200 samples here. Okay, and then we're going to look at the statistics of that in the follow-up quiz. So please at this time take a note of what the offspring ratios are. Again, we have black fur color with black eye color occurring 113 out of 200 times. We have white fur color um, with black eye color occurring 30 out of 200 times. And then we have um, the other data down here. So just take a quick screenshot of this or take a, um, make some notes of that. All right, we're gonna clear that out and set up a new problem. So let's say we take a parent who is homozygous dominant and we pair that with something that has uh, homozygous dominant traits for fur color, but recessive traits for eye color. And we're gonna breed that individual. Now let's take a mouse from this that has, is homozygous dominant for the fur color, but is heterozygote for the eye color. Let's take a look at then what we would have when we breed these two offspring. Okay, our prediction should be that no matter what, the fur color should be, um, the fur color should be black, but we should be seeing the red eye color actually pop up in some of the population. So let's breed these guys a hundred times. I'll try not to go over this time. All right, and again, let's make a note of that. So the black eye color was occurring almost 70 times, and the red eye color was occurring about 30 times. Now, if we continue to breed, will those statistics change? So let's get to 275, let's go all the way to 300. So with 300, let's take a look at, again, pause the video or take a screenshot. Let's take a look at the ratios of those um, offspring now. 
All right, we'll do one more scenario. Let's breed a, um, let's breed a, a mouse that is black with the red eye color with a mouse that is white with the black eye color. So basically we're looking at something that has homozygous dominant traits for black color, but recessive traits for eye color, and then the exact opposite. So if we breed those mice together, not surprisingly, the recessive trait disappears completely from both, which is awesome. We're gonna grab this black mouse with the recessive eye color, um, or the heterozygote eye color, and we'll grab another black mouse with the same. This is gonna look very similar to our first cross, and we should be able to make predictions that both the red eye color and the white fur coat should return at some point in our breeding session here. Okay, so it doesn't come right there, but if we breed these mice enough, we're going to see those show up in the traits. One of the things I like about this simulation is it shows the importance of continuing to collect data, that if all we did was collect data once, our results might not actually reflect um, like our probable results might not reflect our results in reality. So for this one, I'm actually gonna breed these mice like 500 times. All right, because this is, I'm gonna breed them 505 times apparently. Okay, because this is a true dihybrid cross where we have both heterozygote genotypes for fur color and eye color in both, we should be able to see a nine to three to three to one ratio. Again, nine um, times out of every 16 that we do this, um, we should see the dominant dominant phenotypes of black fur, black eyes. Three times we should see a dominant black fur with the recessive red eye color. Three additional times we should see the recessive white color with the dominant uh, black eye color. And then one out of every 16 times we should see the dominant, or sorry, recessive white color with the recessive red eye color. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of math in the post video assignment and see if our results were true on that.